This first reaction setup looks at the combination of two reactants, the identities of which are given in your unknown. When these two reactants are combined, they will form a precipitate. And then, through additional experiments, it can be determined what the identity of the limiting reactant is. In the initial reaction, 25 milliliters of reactant A are combined with exactly 25 milliliters of reactant B. This results in the formation of a white precipitate. This precipitate can then be filtered out through a piece of filter paper. While some mixtures will take an amount of time to pass through filter paper, this experiment looks at the reaction of the filtrate, that is the liquid that passes through the filter paper, with additional components. Notice how the liquid passing through the filter paper is clear. All of the precipitate is contained within the filter paper. With sufficient filtrate collected, we can then move on to the next set of experiments. The filtrate containing any unreacted ions will be mixed with both reactant A and reactant B separately to determine if there is any additional reaction that can happen with the filtrate. Initially, when the, rea when the filtrate is, reactant, is reacted with reactant B, there is no reaction, and there is no additional solid that is formed. When the filtrate is reacted with additional reactant A, a white precipitate is formed, indicating a reaction. Based on these observations, you can determine in the original reaction what is the identity of the limiting reactant. The second reaction setup is specifically a reaction between calcium chloride and sodium hydroxide. The concentrations of these two solutions can be found in your unknown file exactly 25.0 milliliters of calcium chloride is reacted with 25.0 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. The resulting solution can then be filtered through, pil through filter paper. The filtrate, which is the liquid that passes through the filter paper, contains any unreacted ions. All of the reacted ions, including all of the limiting reagent, are contained in the solid, which is trapped in the filter paper. After some time, when enough filtrate is collected to perform the secondary se uh, experiments, we can remove the filter paper and look directly at the experiments with the filtrate containing only 
unreacted initial ions. To some of the filtrate, additional calcium chloride is added. And there is no reaction. To another portion of the filtrate, additional sodium hydroxide is added. And additional precipitate is formed. From these observations, you can determine what is the limiting reactant in this experimental setup. And then, using the concentrations given in your unknown file, you can determine the theoretical yield, that is the amount of solid that was, that was formed in the initial reaction, as well as the literal amount or mass of solid that is contained in the reaction, taking into account the solubility of the product.